I think I'm gonna ruffle a lot of feathers by saying this, but you know what? I don't care. It's how I feel. I hate Family Guy. This is my absolute least favorite show ever. And no, I'm not one of those people that says, Oh, the new stuff is so bad, but the old stuff, like those first three seasons, oh, that was gold. Yeah, no, that's not me either. I think they were better than the new stuff, but to be fair, most things are. The show drives me nuts with its lazy humor, bad characters, and just, ugh, hate it. But what if I told you there was not only a kid version of Family Guy, but one that did it way better than they did? You probably don't believe me, but I'm telling the truth. It's a little-known show called Back at the Barnyard. Back at the Barnyard was based off the 2006 Nickelodeon animated movie, uh, Barnyard. I don't know how many people realize this, but Back at the Barnyard is basically just Family Guy, but the main cast is wearing animal costumes. I bet you think I'm exaggerating. Well, trust me, I'm not. But before we get into Back at the Barnyard itself, let's talk about how it is as an adaptation. It's terrible, but it does its own thing, so I can kind of cut it some slack. Moving on. So Back at the Barnyard's about a bunch of barnyard animals who walk and talk and party when nobody's looking. And that's about it. Like Family Guy, the stories are more based around the characters themselves rather than the setting or themes. And speaking of characters, that's the first thing that ties it to Family Guy. It's inconsistent portrayal, oh boy. So we're starting off with Back of the Barnyard's worst aspect, at least in my eyes. The characters suck. And I'm not saying that they're bad people or anything, it's just that they're all over the place. But to be fair, so are Family Guys. Peter can range from a Homer Simpson ripoff where he's a good, upstanding family man but he's dumb as a brick, or he can be an absolute blithering moron that destroys the lives of everyone around him. Lois can be a promiscuous, callous, shrill woman, or a loving, caring wife that wants to see her family thrive. Stewie can be- okay, Stewie's basically always the same, so moving forward. Brian can be kind of a down-on-his-luck everyman, a pretentious clod, or Seth MacFarlane's political mouthpiece. It's anyone's guess as to which character you're going to be getting from episode to episode. Back at the Barnyard does this too. Otis can range anywhere from being a childlike leader who doesn't really know what he's doing but has the best intentions, or an absolute idiot who doesn't know what the heck he's doing and only wants to party. Abby can either be the straight man or straight woman of the group, or basically be a female Otis. This is the same thing with Peck, too. He can either be the straight man or voice of reason, or he can be just another moron. And that's basically what it is for everybody else. You can either be one character or an absolute idiot. It really depends. Just like Family Guy, consistency changes between every single episode. The one exception in Back at the Barnyard's case I'd say would be Freddy. I'd call Freddy the de facto Stewie Griffin of the show, being that... Basically, he's gonna be the same thing each and every episode. Good job, Freddy, I knew we could count on ya! Even though both Family Guy and Back at the Barnyard struggle with making their characters, Back at the Barnyard is a lot better with using them. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, and again, and again, and again, until people learn. The way to get invested in a character is to have them be consistent. If a character can be literally whatever you want depending on the episode, then how are we going to get invested in them? Will we really care about their struggles? More often than not, no. This is what made the new episodes of Modern Family fall apart, if you don't remember my video about it. Check it out! It's really long, so uh, clear your schedule, I guess. Both Family Guy and Back at the Barnyard have extremely inconsistent characters. But the one thing that Back at the Barnyard doesn't do with its characters that Family Guy does is put them through pointless melodrama situations where we're supposed to feel for them and grow close to them as fictional characters. But of course we don't. These are episodes like Screams in Silence, Life of Brian, or Not All Dogs Go to Heaven. The only time I've seen Back at the Barnyard do this was in its Cowman and Rat Boy movie, so not only was it an entirely different situation, but it was also in a movie that did not take itself seriously. It mostly had moments like that to give it a little bit of legitimacy. Which perhaps may not have been entirely needed, but at least it didn't get a ton of focus. And now we have to talk about the part that made Family Guy infamous. It's writing style. You know, the cutaway jokes, the gags that go on forever, and all that crap. Guess what? Back at the Barnyard has all of these. Oh no. I'm not kidding, Back at the Barnyard has a ton of cutaway gags. The most well-known of these would be viewer mail, which has become a little bit of a meme, 
but there are a lot more than that. There are things like Bionic Janitor from Robopec or Abby's Crazy Uncle from The Great Sheep Escape. It's filled to the brim with them, although it is a bit different than the way Family Guy does theirs. For one thing, they're not overly reliant on pop culture references. I have not seen an episode where Otis is sitting on the couch going, Hey guys, you remember the time when I got milkshakes with Dwayne The Rock Johnson and then we had a fist fight with Danny DeVito? I'd actually kind of want to see that episode just to see how that would play out. There's a few other things that sets their cutaway gags apart, like the quantity. From what I've seen, which is quite a bit, Family Guy has about three cutaway gags per episode, and they last about 20 to 30 seconds. Back at the Barnyard usually has about one, maybe two, and sometimes they actually serve the plot. Like the aforementioned bionic janitor joke, which may be stupid and perhaps goes on a little long, but it's surprisingly plot relevant. That's their inspiration for rebuilding Peck into a robot. I mean, it's not brilliant, but I don't know, at least it serves a purpose and it's there for a reason. There's also Back at the Barnyard's breakneck pacing. Because the episodes are only 11 minutes and not 22 minutes, they have to tell their story in half the time and go really, really fast. They don't have time to dwell on these cutaway gags, so that's why they only last a couple seconds. So, hypothetically, if you don't find Pig turning into the Hulk funny, at least it's over in a few seconds. And then once it's gone, you have the rest of the show to focus on, knowing that there's probably not going to be another cutaway gag in the rest of the episode. But of course, Family Guy just keeps milking that same gag over and over again, silently asking, do you think it's funny now? How about now? You find it funny now? Please validate us, we need this, please. But believe it or not, I don't think the cutaway gags are what links the two shows together the most. I'd say it's their tone. And yes, I know, Back at the Barnyard is a Nicktoon for children, and Family Guy is an animated adult sitcom. How could they possibly have the same kind of tone? It may not be overtly obvious, but it's there. Both shows are trying to be absolutely outrageous. Family Guy, of course, is trying to be outrageous because of its incendiary content and overuse of pop culture references. We all know that Family Guy's primary goal is to push people's buttons. Oh look, Stewie has herpes. Oh look, Brian's disproving God. Oh look, another pointlessly shocking thing that nobody cares about. Ha 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 ha. Back at the Barnyard is trying to be outrageous in a completely different way. Being unapologetically, uncontrollably, stupid. Everything about this show is just random and stupid. That's basically how I can describe it. But surprisingly, in a good way. Family Guy tries to have its cake and eat it too. It's trying to be a conventional sitcom, an outrageously gross disaster piece, and sometimes thought-provoking and chilling. You can't be all of these things at once. It tries to appeal to everyone and also appeal to no one. That makes a paradox, and of course, paradoxes don't work. Meanwhile, Back at the Barnyard does it entirely differently. Its entire purpose is to be one giant mess. Random this, random that, random this and that, oozing from every corner of the screen. It doesn't try to take itself seriously at all. It knows what it is and tries to stick with it. And I gotta say, it may not be great writing, in fact it might not even be objectively good, but it usually gets me to crack a smile. Mostly because I think this is probably my biggest guilty pleasure show. Is it objectively good? Probably not, but you just can't look away. Even in the more mundane episodes, you're just sitting there wondering what kind of crazy insane thing are they going to pull next? Like I said, part of this does come from the fact that it's in a much shorter time, so when something weird does pop up, you can't really dwell on that. It's next thing, next thing, next thing, immediately. Then again, that doesn't stop them from having the jokes that go on forever like Family Guy does, but not only are they much rarer, they're far shorter. And yeah, guilty pleasure status aside, there are still a few jokes in here that I legitimately find funny. Mostly coming from Freddy. Just watch The Chronicles of Barnia if you want to see what I'm talking about. That one's... that one's wild. So yeah, back at the barnyard, not objectively good, but definitely a guilty pleasure. Family Guy? No thank you. But it's amazing to see just how connected these two seemingly unrelated shows are. If it wasn't intentional and it was some kind of freak coincidence, that would really surprise me. 
I mean, come on, one of the creators or head writers had to have been a big Family Guy fan. Like, really, this is too much of a coincidence. But, yeah, Back at the Barnyard did it better, at least for me. If you like Family Guy, alright, that's fine. I'll accept that, so long as you accept that I don't and never will. But if you're a Family Guy fan out there and you want to show it to your kids, show them Back at the Barnyard first. And if you want to know why, well then go back and watch the video all over again. I'll wait, it's okay. But for everyone else, we'd better end this video. Well folks, thanks for watching. What'd you think of the video? Do you think that Back at the Barnyard and Family Guy are very strangely connected like I do? Comment below and let me know because I'm always excited to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys. Hey folks, viewer mail time again. Oh, here's one from Sally, age 14. <clears throat> Dear Pig, Aren't you interrupting the story at the most suspenseful part? Well, the answer is yes, Sally. Yes, I am. Keep those cards and letters coming. Wow.